Yeah. The member for Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I first thank the Minister for Health, the Honourable Greg Hunt, for facilitating the continuing funding for One Deal in Ulladulla. This is an essential service in my region, providing a range of mental health support services for women and families in particular. One of their mantras is to their clients is, are you OK? Another group which is rarely asked, are you OK, is politicians. So I would ask here that those who feel inspired to be spiteful, angry, insulting and gutless because they're using their keyboards, have a think before pressing the send button. How would you feel if you received the email you're about to send? Politics is a place where, if you do not have great resilience, the actions of others can impact on your mental health. Bullying, betrayal and backstabbing have been the hallmarks of one of my state Liberal colleagues, Gareth Ward, over the past six and a half years. In fact, I have endured the trifecta. A sour grapes defeated pre-selection candidate, Andrew Guile, the plotting and manipulation of both people and numbers by Gareth, and the reporting by the local editor of Fairfax, which I really see as bias facts, John Hanscom. Between them, I have been misrepresented in all manner of media in a continuing barrage of actions from April 2012. Many people will have heard rumours about my intentions for the election next year. In the first instance, let me make the following plain. Scott Morrison, apart from being the new Prime Minister, is also someone I see as a friend. He is a man of integrity and he's absolutely passionate about the long-term progress and vision for Australia. For that reason alone, I endeavoured to hold my decision in private until after the Wentworth by-election. Unfortunately, that is now not possible. I have asked the Prime Minister to acknowledge the withdrawal of my nomination for the seat of Gilmore. I want to make it abundantly clear my decision has nothing to do with the leadership of Scott. My decision does, however, have everything to do with the New South Wales State Division and their lack of action and the combined undermining actions as outlined by the revenge-motivated trifecta surrounding me locally. It is the State Division level that I have had little or no support during the past six months while waiting for the pre-selection process, which should have been determined before now. On the local scene since the day of winning pre-selection in 2012, the local self-determined senior Liberal has been leaking damaging material to media, having publicity stunts that are completely against federal policy initiatives, and more recently approached friends asking me to nominate my retirement date and then he'd call off his people. The final straw came when this same state MP, after stacking my branches, completely rolled my supportive FEC committee at the AGM, installing people who have never been part of a federal campaign. The FEC committee is central to winning an election. This is not the first time that Gareth has flexed his vengeance on strong Liberal women. He doesn't just get even, he annihilates anyone who opposes him. In 2016, Gareth worked the numbers and denying a priority position for a strong Liberal woman, Kelly Marsh, a local and effective councillor. She ran independently and won a place on Shell Harbour Council. That same year, Gareth, while helping his friend Andrew Gile get back onto Shoalhaven City Council, worked on the booths, handing out for the independent team, knowing their preferences for mayor would all go to the Greens candidate and not to Jo Gash, also a strong Liberal woman. And despite her winning the primary count, she was defeated. Then, when nominations were called for the, called for the seat of Gilmore, Gareth's friends Paul L and Adam Strainey strangely decided to nominate against me, and while Andrew Gile actively encouraged Grant Schultz to do the same. Was I doing a lousy job? No, only if you ask a local Labor member, and even some of them think I'm doing an OK job. Was it because they thought I'd lose the next election? Hardly, when I had the confidence of the former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and the current Prime Minister Scott Morrison openly stating on national television their support for me. This was all about Gareth's narcissistic revenge, planned and plotted. I have decided that enough is enough. After seeing the betrayal of amazing and dedicated committee members who are now being contacted by the new committee members asking for help, the whole scenario is pathetic. Who was this about? Certainly not the people who elected me. It was about ego-driven ambition, bullying and betrayal, and my local position is completely untenable. I will work right through the term for the people who elected me. This has been and will continue to be the reason I do this job. I will continue to lobby for my dairy farmers. I still have a great deal of work to do and I will not be distracted by boys who should know better, men who know better and do nothing, or women who are manipulated by false information. I am concerned that the media will interpret my decision as a reflection on the leadership of Scott Morrison. If they do, they will be lying. Scott truly is a good man. In the end, I will always ask people, are you OK? And I will mean it. 
and I'll do everything I can to help them. Some of my friends will ask me if I am okay. Absolutely yes. I've had five years working for others in the capacity of a federal member. It has been a privilege, and I thank you. Yeah, yeah.